Time series decomposition is very commonly used in official statistics bureaus. I'm just going to talk in this section about the methods that they use in, in those sort of organizations. So time series decomposition began back in the 1920s using the classical decomposition method that we discussed in a previous section. And then in the 1950s, at the US Census Bureau, uh, they developed a new approach to doing it, a more sophisticated approach that was more robust. Uh, and they call that census two. Presumably there was a census one method as well, but I don't know about it. Um, and that became the basis for what was widely used as the X11 method um, and variations of it. So for maybe 40 or 50 years, uh, organizations were using X11 and then X12 and then X12 ARIMA and then X13 ARIMA. So these were all variations of the methods that were introduced at the US Census Bureau and were subsequently developed in Statistics Canada. The STL method has a very different history. It began at Bell Labs um, and was designed to handle different types of data. So not just quarterly and monthly data, but the type of data that the people in Bell Labs were seeing. Then another collection of methods developed in Europe um, Starting with the Bank of Spain and then throughout Europe, they uh, they were sort of developed further. And this class of methods were known as TRAMO and SEATS, which were acronyms, but they commonly commonly called the SEATS methods. So last I looked, the national statistics offices around the world were all using you know, one or other of these variations. Here in Australia, the Australian Bureau of Statistics uses X12 ARIMA. The US Census Bureau is using a combination of X13 ARIMA with the SEATS developments from Europe. Statistics Canada, I think, is still using X12 ARIMA. The Office of National Statistics in the UK, last I looked, was using X12 ARIMA. And the European Statistics Agency was similar to the US Census Bureau using a combination of X13 ARIMA and SEATS. I'm going to show you how you can do this type of decomposition using the Fable packages. Okay, so let's start with X11 decomposition. So the process is exactly the same as what you've seen already using STL, but instead of STL, we use this function, X13 ARIMA seats. Um, and within that function, you have to say, well, what type of decomposition do you use? And if you want X11, you just say you want to have the X11 decomposition. So you go employed, tilde or modeled as X11. Otherwise, it's exactly the same. Um, you will notice, though, one difference in the results, uh, and that is that, that is that the seasonal component is centered around one. So this is a multiplicative decomposition, and you can see that in the, in the heading up here. Trend is uh, employed as trend times, seasonal times, irregular, or times remainder. So it's um, by default, it's a multiplicative decomposition, whereas STL is always an additive decomposition. Other, other than that, everything else works in a pretty similar way. So the, there's some advantages to doing this type of decomposition. It's, it's quite robust to outliers. There's lots of steps in the process um, that make it robust. So it begins with a classical decomposition that you've already seen, but then it does various iterations of that sort of removing outliers, making things a bit smoother, and so on. And it's completely automated uh, so that you can just let it go and it'll come back to something useful. And because it's been used for so many decades, it's extremely widely tested um, and is known to be a very reliable method. There's a few disadvantages, though. One is that you can't get any prediction intervals, confidence intervals, so no inference about the results. Um, and it's not based on a model, it's based on sort of an iterative algorithm. So there's no sort of modeling framework that you can use to understand the results. And probably the most problematic disadvantage is that it's only developed for quarterly and monthly data. There is no X11 decomposition if you have daily data with a weekly pattern or hourly data or anything like that. You've got quarterly and monthly data, which is the type of data national statistics officers use, then it's good. But otherwise, you have to find something else. 
the uh, the extensions to it uh, all sort of add some bells and whistles. They allow adjustments for trading days. They allow adjustments for other explanatory variables. Um, if you know there's an outlier, you can sort of specify, ignore this observation. If you know there's level shift or ramp effects where the series sort of changes direction like this, you can you can build that in. Um, if there's missing values, they can be estimated and replaced. If there's holiday factors um, that are not seasonal, so Easter moves through the year, um, you know, sometimes it's March and sometimes it's in April, and so it can't just get absorbed into the seasonal effect for either March or April. So those sort of things can be modeled and so on. So lots of lots of variations to help with that type of time series decomposition. The other um, stream of methods that originated in Europe is the SEATS approach, um, which I think stands for seasonal time series. Um, I may be wrong about that. Um, and it's exactly the same um, looking code, except instead of X11, you just put in seats and it does the rest. Uh, and if you look at the help files, you'll see there's lots of variations that you can put in and lots of other, other arguments. But it comes back with, with a um, decomposition. It's also multiplicative. So you can see that the seasonal and the irregular are centered around one, which is what you'd expect from a multiplicative decomposition. Um, otherwise, it's very similar to the results that you get from X11. In fact, for this particular series, there's probably not a lot to pick between them. Um, it has some advantages though over the older X11 approach because this is model based, which means that you can get, if you want them, you can get confidence intervals for the trend or confidence intervals for the seasonality. You can test is seasonality changing over time and so on. Um, but it has the same disadvantage that it's only been developed for quarterly and monthly data. So again, if you've got other types of data, you can't use this, which is why we've concentrated more on STL in the book because we're interested in other types of data. Okay, so um, that's all I'm gonna say about these particular methods. Uh, the code's there if you wanna try them out on your data set, if you happen to have quarterly and monthly data. Um, but we'll, we'll talk about in more detail about the STL method, which um, is a little more flexible in many ways because it can handle a lot more different data types.